Okay, this is two. Daniel, this is two. This is Daniel's prayer live, double live. This is two, the second broadcast today. And how's everybody out there? Did you enjoy your break? We just had. Because, you know, you need to relax. You need to get up. You need to stretch. Maybe you need to get your coffee, whatever. And, um. Uh, when you build your relationship with the Lord and get reborn and filled with the Spirit, uh, God will give you certain gifts and uh, talents and abilities that I might not have. Okay, But He gives me my own talents and abilities and He gives you what He thinks you need. Okay, You might not be able to do like preach like every uh, talk or you know, host a program like me. But, uh, um, he'll give you what you need. Maybe he'll give you something I can't do. Okay, everything about that. Now, here's what we're going to do today. I want to talk to you about, um, this one. This is cauliflower, pasta cauliflower. And I made a new recipe. See how far we can get in, in here with this. Okay. You see it? There you go. It's on your supermarket, okay? It's on your supermarket shelves uh, next to, uh, I guess, a specialty area. The, the gluten-free area, because this is gluten-free. This is uh, pasta cauliflower. This is pasta made with cauliflower and it's spaghetti. It, it's just three ingredients in this one. And it's by a company called uh, Veggie Craft. It's vegetarian, dairy-free, gluten-free, and good source of protein. Veggie Craft Farms teams, the Veggie Craft Farms team believes in providing food that has a full serving of veggie, veggies in every portion. That's why our pasta is made from delicious veggies and nothing else. Well. Okay, I just happened to buy this. I bought like you know several boxes of it, and it, it's a little bit more than your usual spaghetti. But uh, it, the ingredients is lentil peas, lentils. It says lentil, pea, and cauliflower flowers. Okay, and uh, it says four servings in container. This is an eight ounce box. And, um, I think it costs like, maybe this costs like $4 or whatever. Maybe $4.50 or 4 Or three fifty. But, um, i tell you what I did with it. I got three boxes of this and I cooked it in about 11, cu 11 cups of water. I boiled that up. In fact, it was more like chicken broth. Because I had cooked uh, two chicken legs in there previously. So... You can use water or chicken broth. I got 11 cups full of liquid and boiled it. And put three whole boxes in it. And then when it got a little soft on the bottom, I turned it all around and put the hard end in there too. So after a little patience, I was able to get all that, uh, as the water heated up and boiled a little bit, get all that spaghetti uh, into the pot all at once. And the pot, I think the pot holds about 30 cups. Okay, you can you can use any pan you want. You know how how, how much it would take. And uh, I boiled it up with 11 cups of water. I used three packages of this. That's 24 ounces. And I, and I boiled it according to directions. And then there was just a little bit of liquid left after it was all uh, the noodles sucked up all the water. There was a little bit of liquid left in the uh, in the pot, but that liquid looked a little bit thick, and so I left the liquid in there. And what I did is I got um, uh, like a 12 ounce jar, uh, maybe 16 ounce jar, 12 ounce jar of Alfredo sauce, and I dumped it all in there, and I stirred it all up, right, and then. Um, I, I, I got like a big dish that was uh, 
Let me see. Okay. A big dish that's um, 11 foot long. No, that's about like a, a 13 inches long and uh, 8 inches wide and like 2 inches deep. 2 inches deep. And I uh, carefully put all that spaghetti and liquid into that dish. And I got like two handfuls of cheese, of shredded cheese, and I put it in there and mixed it all up because the noodles were really super hot and that melted the cheese in there. And I put my own little spices on top, you know, whatever you'd like to use. And that made myself some delicious macaroni and cheese in that way with the spaghetti noodles. This is actually a uh, spaghetti. All right, and they make uh, macaroni elbow noodles less way too. This company makes it in all kinds of different shapes. But uh, this is gluten free. Now before, I made some spaghetti with, uh, it's made of spinach and uh, had uh, other things in it like spinach, broccoli and stuff like that. But it also had uh, wheat flour in it. You know, when I made of uh, the super green spinach. This one does not have any uh, wheat flour. This is gluten free. This one's gluten free. I'm talking about the other time, the other day before I made this one, I made some of uh, super green uh, noodles and uh, it had claimed to have a lot of vegetables in it. And when I looked at the box, it also had wheat flour in there. So my choice is definitely this over the wheat flour one, okay? But that's a different kind of box. That's a different company. That was made by uh, Roenza. Something with an R. Roenza, something like that, right? Ron Oza. Let me see. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> see what we end up with. Okay, oh, how yeah, about... Okay. There it is. R-O-N-Z-O-N-I. All right. Now that one, you gotta watch that one. That has wheat flour in it. This one is Veggie Craft, and you can buy this uh, this one on um, Amazon, or I, I bought mine at uh, Food Lion. I don't know if you have Food Lion where you live, but uh, it's a product of Italy. And uh, let me see. But it got a website on it, okay. I'm looking to see if this got a website. Okay, here it is. It's uh, www.veggiecraftfarms.com. All right www.viggiecraftfarms.com That's www.veggiecraftfarms.com Okay, and you can check that out and see it for yourself. So, Mm hmm what we're gonna to do today let me see uh, mm. well in the first video we were talking about uh, how we have to be aware of our relationship with God and this is why we're in the book of Psalms is to be aware of our relationship with God
okay? And I always stress we have to have that Romans 12, chapter uh, verse 1 through 3, chapter 12, 1 through 3, to renew our minds, you know? Maybe we'll start there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, that scripture. Okay. All right, we're going to Romans. See, I click on the little icon right there on top, all the way on top over there to the left. There's like a little white box, and right next to it looks like a Bible. You click on that, and it pops out all the uh, bi Bible books and the chapters and verses. So I go to Romans, then I go to Romans 12, and then I select verse 1. And then it goes to it, and if I go down below that Bible, it lists all the Bibles I have. Amplified C, Amplified C Plus, King James Version, King James Plus Virgin, uh, Version, uh, Message Bible, NL, and New King James Version, NLT Compare and Parallel. Okay. Let's see. If you go over okay, brother, see the little Bible, then you see the binoculars, and I'm looking talking about E sword, right? Then you go uh, over there to the right some more. You see it says B C D E. So B, the first one, if you click on that, where it looks like divides, you get like you know three or four things you can work all at once. I don't really use that. I just go to the Bible one. Okay, now I'm over here. At Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says a living sacrifice in the King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, not and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? And good and acceptable and perfect. See, perfect means mature. That you're going to be a mature son of God. Okay? Or daughter of God. That you'll be able to handle the business just like he would handle it. Okay? If he was here. Okay, and then it says the King James Plus. Okay. Transformed. And verse 2. Okay, let's look here. Okay, verse number 1. Talk about the mercy of God. Alright, that's just plain old mercy. Okay, a living sacrifice. Uh, okay, what that is is um, life. Lively, quick. Uh, we're quickening spirits, right? That's our, you know, we're living from our spirit and not our flesh. Okay, uh, a sacrifice, that means we're giving something up. We're giving up this world, right? Holy, acceptable unto God. Acceptable means fully agreeable, acceptable, well-pleasing. You're well-pleasing God, your reasonable service. Now, verse 2, and be not conformed. Now, don't take on their fashion. Don't take on the same patterns, right? Oh, you too many people watching all that fashion TV and getting those fashion magazines, and you put everything on the world has to offer, right? And and God don't even recognize you through that all that makeup and everything. All right, the world, and that's uh, Babylon. That's the world. That's the TV. That's uh, what you would do if if you didn't know Jesus, you know, it's just uh, the world, colleges, all that stuff, okay? But be transformed 
you know, like a, a caterpillar to a butterfly, change, to be changed, transfigure, transfigure, okay, like the Jesus on the Mount of Olives, uh, well, you're like if you're singing, like you just be burst into a ball of light, okay, spiritually, by the renewing, what's that, renovation, renewing, you know, if you got a bad house, it's, it's trashed, you know, the wall's all punched in, you know, the carpet's all moldy, you got to rip it out, okay? Renovate it. By the renovating, okay? Be you transformed, be you changed by the renovation of your mind. Be you transformed by the ripping out of all the bad things and gut that house and put new material in there. All right? For the mind, what's that mind, okay? The mind. Your intellect, that is, uh, your mind divine or human in thought, okay, feeling a will, okay, meaning, mind, understanding, okay, by the renewing of your mind, you know, get that garbage out of there from the TV, from the magazines, from your classmates, from, uh, you know, whoever you're talking to, your boyfriend or your girlfriend on the line, you know, uh, all that porn or whatever, get rid of all that, and put some spiritual thoughts in there, that you may prove Test, approve, discern, allow, examine what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Okay? And perfect means complete labor, gro growth, mental or moral character, neuter, okay? Completeness, full age, man, perfect, mature, okay? In other words, we would say this, okay? Now, watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. What we think we become. Amen. And another reason I like to do these broadcasts because, you know, every day, uh, for this reason, we have to renew our minds, okay? We have to be that living sacrifice, right? And every morning when I get up, I'm going to play some Blood Jesus music. It's like, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me perfectly whole? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay, precious, precious is he. Like that, you know, and I'll play that for a while because I need my mind renewed, you know, and I do my special prayer symbols like this. And that is, uh, a, I have prayed countless hours and I told the Lord every time I do this symbol here that thou know that I, I've uh, enacted all those prayers that I prayed past, present, and the future. And I even go like this to make fun of the devil, right? Like the hootie owl. I said, you know, to show the devil, you know, a thumbs up to the devil, a thumb, not a thumbs up, but, you know, pushing my thumb up to him, right, my nose, right, to say, hey, you know, you get the hell out of here, okay, and God's here now, that's what I mean to say, okay, so, uh, and you can do your own little symbol, you just tell God all the prayer, good prayers that are in his will that you prayed for you and your family when you do a certain sign or symbol because sometimes the devil gets you when you're talking to somebody and you can just do that symbol on your desk. Since I did that symbol, the devil used to torment me about every time I opened my mouth about numbers, about reading things, I couldn't even complete, say a complete uh, a sentence like from one to ten without him uh, trying to get in there and ruin my account. So now, I just put my fingers together, and you know what, I think he's given up on me to try to bother me that way, or anyway. You know, I, he's out of my mind. And even my sister she called me up today, and she just said before she went to see the doctor, she wanted me to know that she realizes now that God's been in her life helping her all along. So, you see, when I say these, uh, this is like my, make sure I get my prayer time in every day, every week. And on a weekend when I'm not doing this, I'm, I'm still doing it because uh, I, uh, in a way, uh, I, I'm praying to God and uh, I'm confessing 
uh, make confessions of faith and things like this. When I'm reading the Psalms to you, when I'm saying it with words, you know, it's like uh, the angels hear what I'm saying. Okay, like that football game, you know, you have the uh, demons on one side of the goalpost, and you have the angels on the other side, and you're the football. When you speak uh, the heavenly language, right? When you speak the heavenly words, when you speak in agreement with God, the angels grab you and uh, fly toward the heavenly goalpost. But when you're not doing that, when you're poor mouthing, when you're saying things that are not of God, you know what happens? The devil grab a hold of the football, they fumble the angels, grab a hold of the football, and a skir uh, just charge the goalpost to the side of hell. So what do you have to do if you're going to be a football? You know, it's just like a lively call. You have to sing the praises of God. Lift your hands in the air. Acknowledge God in all your ways. Know that there's a kingdom above all this earth. There's a kingdom above all this earth. We hear that so many times. But it's not going to be until God opens your eyes that you see it. You can People can tell you about it. You can say you know about it. But it's not a reality to you until God opens the eye, you opens your eyes and heart to receive that knowledge. You know that? I guess when you receive the knowledge, it's rhema to you, right? So you can tell, people can tell to you, brothers and sisters, that you have the power to raise the dead. And you can read in the Bible that you have the power to raise the dead. And Jesus says all things are possible to you, right? Okay, all things are possible if you believe, right? Notice I put my fingers together just then? Because the devil was bothering me. I put my fingers together, now he's got it. Okay, so the deal is right there that you cannot see even though it's right in front of you. It's hidden right in front of you and you cannot really understand it in the, in the depth where you can act on it and believe it until God opens it up to you. Okay? And once he opens it up to you, then you have a rhema. Okay? Then you have that in your hot coal. You have the hot coal of that truth. Right? And then when you speak, fire comes out of your mouth. Okay? Creative miracles come out of your mouth. Just like God himself speaking to you. Right? Because he's charged those words and give you authority in that area. Okay, the hot coal, that ring my word. Okay, that's ever so important. So, so that's uh, how God co codes and decodes these messages, right? So, you guys speak the word. See, that's why here I'm, I'm over here and I'm, I'm doing this uh, video every two hours. Uh, so I can uh, get my make sure I get my prayer time in and I can share and another thing the reason why I do this is because uh, I am investing in God's kingdom see uh, I have invested uh, I have investments but you know now the, uh, the market is slow and everything so I was looking around, I said, where else can I invest, right? And God told me, right, uh, about what I'm doing now, that this would be investing my time for his kingdom. And this would be uh, just like money I'm putting into, I'm giving him just like money, but uh, it's, um, uh, I'm, I'm sacrificing my time. I'm giving my time. I'm creating videos online. I'm taking my time explaining it to people, right? And uh, it's an investment that will be multiplied back to me too. All right? So if someone gets the truth or revelation or something and they write a book, maybe I got 10 people to get truths and revelations, they write books. Uh, even though I don't get any of that money, right but they are uh helping people around the world i get credit for all the helping they doing because i gave them a cup of water 
and I shall not lose my reward. So I can have a whole team of people working for me that I don't even supervise. Don't God supervises them. But because, because I gave them that cup of water and they're multiplying it right to the people and helping the people, uh, that's all getting credited to my account. Just, just like, you know, Amazon gets money credited to his account. Like in the natural, I'm getting that in the supernatural. Okay? So I am investing uh, in the kingdom of God by doing this. Does that make sense? And uh, if you don't have anything to invest, you can make, uh, if you have a phone, uh, if you pray, I'm sure you can get a one minute video made. You just take your phone and you have your, your YouTube account. Just there at the bottom it says make a video, right? It says make the video. And of course your first video isn't going to be as good as when you start making the videos every day. But you get better as you go. If you can just make a, a video, it doesn't really have to be a minute, just maybe 30 seconds, 15 seconds, or just say you just want to get on the line and say hi, or just or praise God, because he's teaching me this is my first video. Do that. I mean, maybe uh, may not, get, may not get a lot of hits, right? But you know what? Oh, you made a video, okay? And you can just read the word and ask the Lord what you'd like him to make, what the kind of video you should make today. Something you learn. If something's really outstanding that comes to you and you're very excited about it, then make a video about it. Ask the Lord, okay? So, now, that's uh, Romans 12, 1 through th uh, 2. That's 1 and 2. That's a living sacrifice. Then right under that is a gift of grace, okay? Then uh, verse, Romans 12, verse 9, is the marks of a true Christian. There's a lot in here. A living sacrifice, gifts of grace, mark of a true Christian. I mean, we need to come back to that. Okay, let's come to... Uh, let us go... To Rome, uh, to uh, Psalms 40. Psalms 40. There you go. Uh, it says, let me make sure that we're in the right one too, okay? All right, let me see. Videos. Yep, Psalms 40. This will be 43B. 43B, Psalms 40. Okay? And... I, I, was, I happened to peek during the break. That's not a very big psalm. So let's go there and see it, okay? It has 40, no, it has 17 verses to it. So let's read it in the King James Version, okay? My help and my deliverer, Psalms 40, verse 1, to the chief musician, a song of David, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry, Verse 2, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. Verse 3, and he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many, many see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. For... Blessed is the man that mar marketh the Lord his trust. Blessed is the man who maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Verse 5. Many, O Lord my God, are they are the, thy wonderful works, which thou 
has done, and thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. 6. Sacrifice and offering you didst not desire. Mine ears has you opened. Bird offering and sin, offering has you not required. Verse 6. Sacrifice and offering you didst not desire. Mine ears has you opened. Bird offerings and sin offering has you not required. Verse 7. Then I said, then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book is written of me. Verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is written within my heart. Verse 9. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, you knowest. Verse 10. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. 11. Withhold not you thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Uh, verse 12. For innumerable evils have comforts about me. For innumerable evils have comforts me, compassed me about. My iniquities have taken hold upon me, so I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore, my heart faileth me. Verse 13. Be blessed, O Lord. To deliver me, O Lord, haste, make haste to help me. 14. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Verse 15. Let them be desolate for reward of their shame that say unto me, Ha uh ha. -huh. Verse 15. 16. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. 17. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You, Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tearing, O my God. Amen. The Lord be magnified. See, verse 18, 16 says, The Lord be magnified. Who says that? Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. Amen. But what's, uh, what's very special about... Oh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament, you know, you get your sins forgiven uh, once a year, and they had to do like, you know, so many bulls and all kinds of sheep, and they had to make all kinds of sacrifices, and then that was uh, forgiveness for once, once a year. But that did not wash away the guilt and the condemnation from your heart. That just covered it up. In the New Testament, Jesus has removed all guilt and condemnation from you. So you are beautifully crystal clean. All right? You're clean. Okay, because God's spoken it. He's forgiven us. And then in the Old Testament, uh, they have got the, like the judges, the kings, the prophets, and the priests. Those four will receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the New Testament, all the believers get the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and all of us get all the anointings. Uh, we are the prophets. We are the uh, royal priesthood, okay? A chosen generation. 
with the royal priesthood a uh, uh, chosen generation and that's found in Hebrews. I'll get to find it for you. That's why when people say they have this anointing or that anointing, it's uh, I think it's actually sinful for you to play and uh, along with them and get that. Because um uh, or that activation or this activation. Because isn't Jesus the great uh, baptizer? Doesn't Jesus Jesus baptize us with fire? Okay? It says in a, like a 1 Peter 2 and 9, You are called to be a royal priest, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. 1 Peter 2.9 uh, and it says a priest is one who intercedes before God for another person, a family, a city, or a nation. Now let me tell you, it says right there, you know, uh, right there that we are a royal priesthood. Okay, we have all those things. We have all those anointings. We are like royalty. That means we got uh, the kingship. We got the priesthood, right? A royal priest, a judge. We're the judge of not of people, but of the word. And situations and things, and uh, we are also uh, let's see, king, priest, judge, and prophets. Okay, because we, uh, Jesus is the, is the spirit of prophecy, and He's in us. Okay, see, all we have, we are all those things because Jesus is inside us, and He's the one that baptizes us with fire. So when he baptizes and you receive the Holy Spirit and start speaking in tongues, everything you have is already activated by Jesus. So that's sinful too. Sinful too to get all these activations from these people. Because uh, I don't know what they've been listening to, but uh, my Bible says Jesus baptized me with fire. So if Jesus did it, that's good enough for me. Okay. Uh, so what are you supposed to do? We, we want to raise somebody from the dead. Get an activation from somebody first. Jesus activated me. Okay? We raise people from the dead. Okay? Fires baptism. Okay? Fires baptism. Oh, uh, we should put fire baptism. You know, uh, what is baptism Baptism of, by, with fire? It says gotquestions.com. Oh, gotquestions.com. G-O-T-Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S dot org. Gotquestions.org. What is a baptism of, by, or with fire? And some believers... Some believe that the baptism with fire refers to the Holy Spirit office as the energizer of the believer's service and the purifier of evil within because of the exhortation do not quench the spirit found in 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Do not quench the spirit. The command to the believer is, not, is to not put out the spirit's fire by suppressing his ministry. Okay? Alright, and, and it said that was a command. Now, let's look right here. Alright. Fire baptism. Let's see, Jesus. Jesus is a great fire baptizer, okay? John baptized with water, and we still need water baptism, because Jesus got water baptized, we do what he did. But we also need Jesus to baptize us. And let's see, I read this, okay, it's Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, uh, by uh, endofthematter.com. End of the matter dot com. Okay. John then goes on to say that he baptized with water for repentance, 
but the one who is coming after him, that is, Jesus, will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. There are the two separate baptism mentions, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of fire. Oh my goodness. I never looked at it that way before. What is the baptism of fire and is it biblical? It says, baptism of fire is often used to describe a difficult transition. It might be used to describe a new soldier ending boot camp, a person who just got a promotion, or who has, you know, uh, you know, ever hear the expression that this new supervisor is gonna, hasn't got his feet wet yet? That's kind of referring to like Moses, right? He had put his feet in the water before the Red Sea opened. So that means you have to start doing what God told you before uh, you see Him working. So if there's some, if there's something you gotta do first, like uh, set up your software or something before, before you get the message, then you gotta set the software up. Then after you do that, then you get the message. You see what I'm saying? So we're gonna look right here. It's Matthew 3:11, and we're gonna go that uh, with the King James Version uh, plus. Matthew 3.11 Okay. And I'm going to look up uh, I'm, gonna, I'm in King James Version Plus. Okay. That he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So we really know what the Holy Ghost is, right? Now let's see if the holy part is it. Holy, there's a word for holy. And that's sacred, morally blameless, blameless, religious, ceremony, holy, saint, consecrated, okay, ghost. That is a uh, breath, a breeze, Spirit, soul, mental disposition, superhuman, angel, divine, uh, diadem, Holy Spirit, ghost, life, spirit. Okay, with God's consecrated spirit and with fire. Now, on the primary word fire, literally or figuratively, uh, specifically lightning fiery fire fiery fire okay passionate fire okay a passion so he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with and with passion you know when you get reborn you get the Holy Spirit you know it's like you gotta tell everybody right and, and I guess that's the fire part that's the, oh God, I'm here now with passion doing these every day, you know, and uh, first I started doing them in the morning, and then I started doing them uh, at night time, and, and now the Lord told me, since you gave up TV and everything, you don't have the TV no more, why not just do it during that time, and you be the TV, okay, so we went through all kinds of time, time zones, time, time frames, and that's what works best now. Okay, so let's see where we are now. Now let's get back to the Bible. Uh, let's get back to the Psalms 40. So all I have to do is click on that one arrow that goes to the left, that next to the open Bible uh, uh, icon, and take me right back to Psalm 40. So let's read the Message Bible, okay? Psalms 40, Message Bible. Okay. Let's pray first. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, you are holy. Lord, you help us. Lord God, you give us the passions of life. Lord God, we want to go into your kingdom, Lord. We don't want to be sent away like the uh, foolish virgins. We want to be like the wise virgins. We want to enter into your kingdom, Lord God. Lord, you know, like... The people born into ministry, the people born into like being a, a Jewish people, right? You see, if you're born into it, 
it's more like you take it for granted and everything and you think you're entitled to it and you're not so you know what happens is they kind of if you're born into it you kind of miss the whole boat because look at Israel uh, they were all born into it the whole families and everything and they followed you for centuries but when you appear to them you know what happened uh you know, they still, some of them got it, but the, the nation as a whole did not. And it's just like in the ministry. i seen people, you know, they were born into the family of, uh, um, of evangelists or, or pastors. And they were raised in the church. And uh, they were given assignments to teach people. And they just became nar narcissists. And took everything for granted and felt entitled to it and started just kicking people around and, and shooing people out of church and manipulating everybody. And they still don't understand, no matter how many times they teach the Bible, because they got an old Bible book they're teaching over and over and over again, they still don't get it because that's not you. All right? They still don't understand, okay? No matter how many times they open the Bible because they don't understand you. Uh, they have to know you, connect to you. They need the connection of the vine. Uh, first, the connection is, you know, the mind to their own spirit that's been reborn and recreated in God. That's in Jesus. Then from Jesus, it goes to his Father. See, and from his Father, then that, that completes it. And that's, uh, we walk, renew our mind into the spirit. So we're always in the spirit. Even though we have physical needs, that we go to our spirit on how to satisfy those physical needs and satisfy those physical needs according that, in ways that please God. And we stay in the spirit, okay? And one of those physical needs, you know, people, they sometimes they get married and they have a wife and, and the marriage bed is not defiled. But don't mean you can do bad things in bed and do anything you want in bed. I mean, you have to do things and handle your business the way that's pleasing to God. So you ask God, whatever you're doing, is it pleasing to Him? Now let's go here. My help and my deliverer, Psalms 40, verse 1. A David Psalm. I waited and waited and waited for God. At last he looked. Finally he listened. Verse 2, He lifted me out of the ditch, pulled me up from deep mud. He stood me up on solid rock to make sure I wouldn't slip. Verse 3, He taught me how to sing the latest song, God of Praise Song, to our God, more and more people are seeing this. They enter the mystery of banning themselves to God. Verse 3, He taught me how to sing the latest God song, a praise song to our God. More and more people are seeing this. They enter the mystery of banning themselves to God. Verse 4, Blessed are you who give yourselves over to God. Turn your backs on the world. Sure thing, ignore what the world worships. Verse 5, The world, a huge stockpile of God wonders and God thoughts. Nothing and no one comes close to you. I start talking about you, telling what I know, and quickly run out of words. Neither numbers nor words can account for you. Verse 6. Doing something for you, bringing something to you, that's not what you're after. Being religious, acting pious, that's not what you're asking for. You've, you've opened my ears so I can listen. 7. So I understand I'm coming. I read in your letter what you wrote about me. Okay. Psalm 40 verse 8. And I'm coming to the party you're throwing for me. That's when God's word entered my life, became part of my very being. 
verse 9, I've preached to you, to the whole congregation. I've kept back nothing of God. You know that. Verse 10, I didn't keep the news of your ways a secret. Did not keep it to myself. I told it all. How dependable you are. How though I didn't hold back pieces of love and truth for myself alone. I told it all. Let all the congregation know the whole story. Verse 11, Now God, don't hold out on me. Don't hold back your possession. Your love and truth are all that keeps me together. Now God, don't hold uh, out on me. Don't hold back on your passion. Your love and truth are all that keeps me together. Verse 12, when troubles gang up in me, a mob of sins counting, past counting. When the trouble gangs up in me, a mob of sins past counting. I was so swamped by guilt, I couldn't see my way close. I was so swamped by guilt, I couldn't see my way clear. More guilt in my heart than hair on my head. So heavy the guilt that my heart gave out. Verse 13, soften up God and intervene. Hurry and get me some help. Verse 14, 40, Psalm 40, verse 14. So those who are trying to kidnap my soul will be embarrassed and lose face. Anyone who gets a kick out of making me miserable will be heckled and disgraced. Verse 15, so those who pay for my ruin will be booed and jeered without mercy. Verse 16, But all those, but all who are hunting for you, oh, let them sing and be happy. Let those who know what you're all about tell the world you're great and not quitting. Verse 17, And me, I'm a mess. I'm nothing and have nothing. Make something out of me. You can do it. You've got what it takes. But God, don't put it off. Amen. My help and my deliverer. Psalms 40. Okay, and you know what that tells me? It says right here. Verse 17. And me, and my, uh, and me. I'm a mess. I'm nothing and have nothing. Make something out, make something of me. You can do it. You've got what it takes. But God, don't put it off. You know what that tells me there? If we look at um, all the heavens and the earth, right? Do you know, uh, if we look at the heavens and the earth, we can see the glory of God, okay? And that's in one of the Psalms we covered. Okay? Let's see. The heavens declare God's glory. Okay. Heavens. God's glory. That's Psalms 19, I'm thinking. Yep. Psalms 19, verse 1. Okay. What does the Bible say about the glory of he the heavens? Psalm 19, verse 1. Describes the heavens as declaring and producing. Oh, describes the heavens as declaring and proclaiming the glory of God. Describes the Psalms 19:1 describes the heavens as declaring and proclaiming the glory of God. The psalmist goes on to say in verse 2 and 6 that the heavens reveal knowledge. God's glory can be heard with throughout the ends of the earth. So, you know, um, God, it says God puts knowledge in the earth, in, in the heavens. But you know what? There are some people who take astrology and, 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 and let that rule their lives. Okay, now God might put uh, knowledge in uh, the heavens, but it's not intended to rule your lives. God rules the heavens. God rules your life. Okay? You talk to God. Okay? Not the heavens. Okay? Because the heavens is just a natural thing. Okay? God made it. 
it's subject to God. Okay? Just like, you know, it was uh, hmm, Joshua, where the sun stopped during a battle. Joshua asked God to stop the sun. Don't let the sun go down. So the sun stopped. And that's in Joshua. Okay? Okay, it's uh, like a two-word sentence. Sun stop. Okay, let's look that up. Okay. Okay, oh, we're going to add the word Bible. Sun stopped, Bible. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13. Okay. The day the sun stood still. That's about the sixth book of the Bible. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky. And for nearly a day, the sun was in no hurry to set. Okay. And the sun stood still. And the moon did not move until the nation had conquered its enemies. All right. Well, the day the sun stood still, Joshua chapter 10, verse 13. So you see, uh, the heavens are subject to God and subject to us. Okay. So, and God bless you. Salmon send you. Salmon send you. God bless you too. Okay? And we're just talking about the uh, glory of God. And uh, if you look at the glory of God, look at God's glory. Let's see some of God's glory. Let's see the heavens, okay? All right, let's see if I got some heavenly pictures there. All right. Now this one was about, I have a video on this one. This is when that satellite Cassina, uh, something like that, uh, it f went into uh, Saturn unexpectedly. And I made a video about how uh, death can creep upon you and you don't even know it's happening. And here's another uh, solar system here, see? You can see it. All right. Here's another picture. Beautiful picture. No, that's not the solar system, but let's see what this is. Oh, that's the next guy. Okay. Here's another one. See? Ain't that beautiful? Glory of God. Glory of God. Here, this kind, This is the sisters. This is a, a whole bu bunch of suns. You know those little stars in the sky? Those are suns. Okay. And I think this is about the moon, the different faces of the moon. Here, this is the uh, the horse nebula. Okay, out there in space. Some more. Okay. This here is the sun. You see, I got all these pictures from NASA. And this is the moon around one of the planets. Uh, uh, Neptune or something like that. Here's some more. Ain't that beautiful? Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. Okay. And it's red because I think that's uh, hydrogen or magnesium. Well, magnesium is red. There's some more stars. Suns. Those are suns. And those are light years away. They got this Hubble telescope in the sky. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. That's a picture of the lion. There's a lion behind there. There's another lion. That's my sister. She believes in the word of God. And then she's going to see telling everybody about the Lord. You know, just like a dandelion. When, when you blow the dandelion, it goes, Whew! all the seeds go all over, play, over the place. She's about 70 years old now. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And here's another son. So, uh, that's about the glory of God. 
So now let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, okay, for your word today. And we were talking about that last phrase in the Bible. Let's pull that last phrase up. It says in uh, Psalms 40, verse 17, And me, I'm a mess. I am nothing and I have nothing. Make something out of me. You can do it. You've got what it takes, but God, don't put it off. And I was saying, you know, I pulled all those pictures up of the of space to show you that God created the heavens and the earth, right? And you think of Genesis and uh, how he created the world, right? And then and, and it, it all fell apart because of man's sin, and then at the end he recreated it, and it's all beautiful again. I don't want anyone else working in my mind except Jesus. I want the Creator to do a Genesis in my mind. And uh, like in the last book of Revelation, where it says a recreation, a restoration, that's what I want. I want the Creator to fix my mind the way it's supposed to be. Fix my eyes, fix my mind. So I fix my eyes so I can see right, I can right, hear right with my ears, I can see right with my eyes, I can understand God's word, and I can see into the Spirit, Lord. Let me see into the Spirit. Let me see more uh, visions. Let me have open visions, when they say open visions. Just give it to me, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Let me have dreams and visions, okay? You know, one time, you know, I had so I heard God's voice in my stomach, right? And I had intensely think about that so much, right? It almost hurt for years and years and years. Just imagine if I had a big vision, how that do to me? But anyway, I hope you're blessed today. And be blessed in Jesus' name. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and comment because it helps the uh, station, it helps this program so much when you do that. And uh, make, give me some links on your websites too so that uh, people will come to the stream. Secondchance.com, okay? That is the name, uh, that is the domain, U-L-R. For my playlist, http semicolon forward slashes uh, www.secondchancecassat. That's uh, S E C O N D C H A N C E C A S S A T T dot com. Second chance. Cassat, C A S S A T T dot com, and make sure those are all lowercase letters, and don't put no S in the HTTP, okay? Because this is a forward, uh, a forward. Um, it, it's a forward uh, URL, right? To uh, uh, that big long URL uh, YouTube gives you, you can't remember. When when, it, when you when you put there, uh, use it with lowercase letters without no S. Because uh, it won't it won't work without with an S, but just without no S, it get there. And when you get there, it'll be it have the S there. It'll be secured, okay. So don't worry about the S when you just getting there, okay. When you get there, the S will be there, okay. When because when you get there, when you type that in there like I asked you to, uh, you will be there, and uh, you see why when you see uh, the URL. And if you go to danielsfire.com, go to danielsfire.com, and right on top is that uh, what I just said about the HTTP uh, secondchancecassette.com, and I, I haven't written out. All you have to do is click on it, but you can see the spelling of it too and everything. It's right toward the on top, uh, a little bit down, but on top there. Okay. HTTP two dots forward slashes www three w's dot second chance cassette dot com will give you to my playlist my Daniel's prayer double live prayer where I, where I put all all my uh, tubes I'm gonna load this up to YouTube and I put a little thumbnail on it and everything it's a little picture and you have all my the whole all everything I put out right there all neatly all in one neat package 
and that's different from Facebook because on Facebook you have all the all too many different messages on there, right? So it's not just uh, the it's just not my videos over here in the playlist. It's just my videos, okay? So God bless you, and remember, this is not uh, like your regular broadcasting on people broadcast on YouTube or anything like that, or like a TV. This is a voice from heaven. In Jesus' name, Amen. Because it's through my spirit. And thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll put these out every day, uh, five times a week. Okay? All right. God bless you and take care. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bye bye. Love you.